Hi, I'd like to order four pairs of the Anta weightlifting shoes in size 13. I want a yellow pair, a red pair, a black pair, and a gold pair, like the ones Lu Jia Zhen wears. I'm trying to become a, a Chinese weightlifter, so... What do you mean you only have them in men's seven and a half? Well, do you have any idea when you're going to get 13s in? Three and a half years. That seems legit. I'll take four. Soon I will be one step closer to the Chinese master race of weightlifters. Close. Fast. Low. Let's talk about what we actually mean when we say squat jerk. I've divided what I'm going to call the two-footed jerk into three categories. The power jerk, wherein the lifter gets ample height on the bar and their center mass remains relatively high. The squat jerk, wherein the lifter deliberately drops into a low, below parallel overhead squat, and the power or nod jerk. This jerk is where the lifter drops lower depending on the weight. They are pushed into a lower squat, even though they are resisting and adding upward pressure into the barbell. Now that we have these categories set, you might be asking yourself, should I split jerk? Or should I power, power or nah, or squat jerk? And here's how I see it. The advantages of the split jerk are twofold. Firstly, the split jerk allows you to distribute your base along two planes, allowing for more stability. Secondly, this position allows for an easier method or a different method of supporting the weight overhead, meaning your ability to internally rotate the shoulders overhead is less of a factor, because as the torso increases forward angle, the load is shifted to the mid traps. What I have noticed is that internal rotation isn't as noticeable and cueable as some may think. Just like the difference in squat technique is necessary due to hip socket structure and levers, the degree of visible internal rotation may not be as aggressive on some as it is in others. With the help of hook grip and all things gym videos of Team China moving massive weight while having the aesthetic to boot, weightlifting is more in the public eye. However, people's perception of technique surrounding the jerk still needs to be objective. Though Team China is among, if not the best in the world, time and time again, we see some perennial Chinese lifters consistently missing jerks of unquestionably sub-maximal cleans. I was there in 2015 when Liu Zhaojun absolutely dominated the snatch and bombed out of the cleaning jerk on three missed jerks in a row. Then, in Rio, Liu was beat out after Nijat Rahimov overcame a deficit of 12 kilos. Don't mistake this as an argument that Lou should have been a split jerker, which would be the dumbest argument I could ever make. Lou is quite possibly one of the greatest weightlifters in current times, and it took the biggest clean and jerk of all time to beat him. If you are looking for my opinion on what jerk style you should use, it's this. Find out what feels naturally better. Do your shoulders internally rotate like Opti or Shi Ji Yang in the two-footed jerk? Are you willing to go back into the squat after a maximal clean? and you have the overhead stability to do so, like Lou, then roll with it. The best thing you can do is always focus on progressing your training, regardless what technical changes you're making. Because if you find out that maybe you aren't a good two-footed jerker, you can always switch back to the split. Weightlifting isn't a game that you'll ever win, but you'll lose and you'll lose it fast if you refuse to adapt and be objective. Where are their armpits? Forward, where are their elbows? Down, that's the shoulder position that we want as we squat. That externally rotated position. Overhead, do you like to teach internal or external rotation with the shoulder? Uh, internal rotation. I call the bar and this part, this part look up. It's, it's, it's work. Still work, and a lot of people do this, but the question is only one, two. 
how long and what is the price for surgery. Right. <laughs> Good.